Hello, in this video we're going to look at singular matrices. So begin with the definition. A square matrix is singular if and only if the determinant of A equals zero. So let's look at a few matrices and determine are they singular or not. So example, is A singular or not? Okay, so our first candidate is the matrix 1, 2, 3, second column 0, 0, 0, and the last column negative 6, 1, 4. So you might be thinking that that column of zeros would force this determinant to be 0, and that intuition is correct. Let's take a look at why that would be the case. So the determinant of A can be found by expanding on any row or any column. In particular, we could expand on the second column. And if we did that, we would find that we have the element of A times negative 1 to the third power times the minor associated with row 1, column 3, and so forth. And you would say, why are you even writing those things down? Um, you know, it doesn't matter because anything times 0 is just going to be 0. So in some sense, I don't even need to write all this down. But I hope that by writing it down, it's a little bit more convincing than just uh, verbally walking you through it. The point is, you've got a 0 plus a 0 plus a 0. And yes, the determinant of A is 0, precisely because we have a column or row of all zeros. So A is singular. A is singular. Great. So for our next matrix, let's take a look at the following. Suppose we have a different matrix, uh, B. So is B singular or not? Singular or not? And for this matrix, let's let B be 3 by 3. First row is a 1, 2, 3, second row 2, 4, 6, and a 1, negative 1, 5. If we wanted to compute the determinant here, we could expand on any row or any column. So expanding on row 1, we have a 1 times a negative 1 to the second power times the determinant of the 2 by 2 left over after deleting row 1, column 1. plus 2 to the negative times the negative 1 to the third power, so it's going to be negative 2. And then we have a 2, 6, 1, 5. And lastly, we have a 3 times the determinant of the 2 by 2 given by 2, 4, 1, negative 1. And working this out, what we get here is we get a 20 minus a negative 6, so that's 26, minus 2 times 10 minus 6, so that's a negative 2 times 4, that's negative 8, and a 3 times a negative 2 minus 4, that's 3 times negative 6, that's a negative 18. And indeed, the determinant is 0, so we would say B is singular. Another way to arrive at this result, um, you might be observing that one row is a scalar multiple of the other. And remember that the determinant of B doesn't change if we add a multiple of one row to another. And so if we did that and we made a row of all zeros, then we would immediately know the determinant is zero. Either way you do it, B is singular. Okay, so here's a question that I have for you. So my question is uh, the following. If A is singular, is A times B singular for some matrix B? And let's see, if you stop and think about that for a few minutes, the answer is yes. Here's why. If A is singular, A is singular implies that 
the determinant of a is 0. That's just the definition of what it means to be singular. Now, let's look at the determinant of a times b. By properties of determinants, this is just the determinant of a times the determinant of b. And who knows what the determinant of b is? I don't even care because the determinant of a is 0, meaning that this whole product is going to be 0. Since the determinant of a b equals 0, this shows that AB is a singular matrix.